New Year's Day, January 2011. I'm in my mid-20s, unemployed and broke. Utterly desperate, I walk into the Corvette Diner looking for a job. As an out-of-work theater major, I would have taken anything they offered, but I had heard about one Corvette job in particular which sparked my interest, disc jockey. A staple of San Diego, the Corvette Diner is like a Johnny Rockets on mega steroids. A massive eating establishment that trades in good old-fashioned whitewash Americana from the 1950s and 60s. The only out-of-time feature is a giant poster of Guy Fieri giving the diner a seal of approval with a big frosted tip thumbs up. Waitresses with big attitudes and soda jerks with even bigger regrets are required to take monikers like Trudy, Maud, and Buster, all hearkening back to the simpler times. It's the kind of place that makes you think everything's gonna be okay as long as you keep on sucking on that hopscotch butter milkshake in front of you. Upon arriving at the Corvette on that fateful New Year's Day, I strolled up to Fred, the head disc jockey and a lifer at the Corvette, to make my DJing intentions known. Fred, with his sweet smile, Tommy Bahama shirt, and khaki cargo shorts, asked if I had ever DJed. I hadn't, but I didn't say this. Instead, I responded, spin all the time, dude. Great, Fred replied. And I assume you are familiar with the 50s and 60s top 10 billboard hits. Before I even questioned if I should tell the truth, another lie popped in. Am I ever. That stuff is my jam. This was not 100% accurate. I mean, at the time, I knew the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Elvis, but looking in the Corvette Diner's playbook of songs was like reading a menu in Klingon. So I just picked songs at random, any tune that sounded vaguely familiar or like it might be danceable based on the title or artist. Fred threw them on the Corvette's airwaves, read iTunes, while I sweated to those oldies. By the time song number five played, Fred closed his eyes and breathed in deeply. <sighs> oh my goodness, he said. This is one of the best playlists that anyone has ever made when applying for this job. And thus, DJ Etch-A-Sketch was born! Ba -boo! Why Etch-A-Sketch? Because the Corvette Diner requires that your fake name be in context with the theme. And after a manager tried to force DJ Duke on me, a friend pointed out that DJs have two turntables, much like the nostalgic Etch-A-Sketch has two knobs. If it worked for the kids, it would work for me. And boy, did it work. As DJ Etch-A-Sketch, I would go on to be the most highly revered weekend DJ at the Corvette Diner. And this is because I played really deep cuts from very obscure artists, B-sides and C-sides that turned heads yet prompted solid salutes of thumbs extended towards the sky. I didn't know what I was doing, but whatever it was, it seemed to be hitting all the right notes. At the Corvette, the employees knew that when I was DJing, they didn't have to hear Hound Dog five times in one hour, every hour, on the hour. Becoming DJ Edge of Sketch was a dream come true based on a fantasy I didn't even know I had. I felt like a superhero snorting cocaine, flying higher and higher, especially after discovering my silky radio voice. Hey, all you groovy dudes and hep cats and boogie down babes, grab yourself a cherry cola and head on over to where everyone's working at the car wash. Thank you. Without a doubt, it is one of the best jobs I've ever had. Sadly, though, the universe shows you that you can't be DJ etch a sketch forever. After a year at the Corvette, I left San Diego for the Bay Area, succumbing to a big boy career that offered health insurance and a title my parents weren't ashamed of. <laughs> With a heavy heart, I put away my turntables, read 2009 MacBook Pro, 
and focused on being a stupid adult with mature responsibilities. But something was missing. I had retreated into my alter ego life. My world was thrown off balance, and I was beginning to feel an intense craving for that elusive high I had experienced at the Corvette. The problem was I didn't know how to feed this craving. I tried to drown my sorrows and desires by going to certain bars on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursday nights. Bars that advertised only one thing, karaoke. My routine consisted of ordering a drink or two or three, stirring up some liquid courage, submitting my nom de plume of MC Pasty to the KJ, and then waiting my turn until I was ready to rip loose on the mic with some old school Jay-Z, like, when the Remy's in the system, ain't no telling, will I fuck em, will I diss them? That's what I be yelling, I'm a pimp by blood, not relay, Sean. Y'all be chase them, i replace them, what? Because when you are a white Jewish boy from the hardcore streets of Salt Lake City, Utah, you have to find a rhythmic way to express yourself. But once again, the universe reared its ugly head, showing me what happens when you rock and roll all night and only go to your grown-up place of employment every other day. MC Pasty had to be written out of the series, but my cravings continued to gnaw even more intense. Around this time, I had moved into a house in San Francisco. Rita, one of my roommates, worked for a startup. Shocking, I know. And this startup was moving their office into an old historic building in downtown San Francisco. You look surprised. You shouldn't be. And with this move came a party. And with this party came the search for a DJ. And even though I owned no equipment, and it had been a few years since I had played at the Corvette, I offered my services. Rita was very kind. Jake, we're going to rent you a full sound system. What do you need? I mean, besides an iPod mini, I had no idea. Being a real DJ with actual sound systems was way out of my league, but not wanting to sound like a novice, I answered, you get me the biggest, baddest sound system you can afford. <laughs> Wish granted. When I walked into the venue, the event, <laughs> I was greeted by a gargantuan AV system three stories tall. Subwoofers begat baby subwoofers with grandbaby subwoofers. There were two technicians who were going to be monitoring my levels all night long, both of whom bombarded me with questions about XLRs, RCAs, and other technical jargon. I kept asking where I could plug my headphones into the thingy on the laptop device. You know what I'm talking about. Guests had already started to arrive. Things needed to get started pronto. I got this, you guys. I got this. Kept coming out of my mouth, even though I didn't have it or even know what it was. And with one nervous finger, I hit the space bar on my laptop. And just like my audition at the Corvette, the power of Guy Fieri blessed me. Because when I pressed that button, beautiful music came out of the speakers. Guests moseyed their way onto the dance floor. The party got popping off, and DJ Etches Gets was resurrected. <sighs> As the cutoff time for the party rolled around, Rita approached me with light in her eyes. Can you keep playing until like 3 in the morning? I smiled. Hand me that Costco-sized bottle of whiskey, and we have a deal. I took a long slug off the bottle, then without waiting for any other beats to drop, I promptly blacked out. <laughs> the next thing I remember was waking up in a living room surrounded by family portraits of people I didn't know or recognize. I hadn't the faintest notion of where I was except that the house was not my own, my wallet was empty, cell phone dead, and I was missing a shoe. Exiting the house, I approached the first person I saw, no doubt fearful of interacting with me in my current state of complete chaos. Where am I? I asked. Oakland, the bewildered passerby informed me. Fuck! I didn't live in Oakland. 
One thing I did have was my Clipper card, which allowed me to enter BART for the longest ride of shame back to San Francisco. Upon arriving at my house, Rita stormed up to me, cursing me out. I can't believe you did that. How could you do that? Why did you have to do that? I plugged in my phone to see about 20 text messages and 30 missed calls. Various people, friends, neighbors, had all tried to contact me during my bender. Piecing the clues together, I came to understand that someone at the party drove me to my house after SFPD shut the party down at the startup. I was already passed out, but my ride woke me up in an effort to find my keys, which didn't work. Instead, I drunkenly ranted and raved about nothing at the top of my lungs on my front porch from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. before this good Samaritan with the car gave up and hauled me to their house in Oakland. Thank you, whoever you are. I salute you. The last voicemail on the phone was from a woman I didn't know and had no memory of meeting. Hey, Jake. Or should I say, DJ at your sketch. <laughs> My name is Natalie, and I got your contact info from Rita. I was at the party last night where you were playing, and I just loved your music choices. But I especially loved when you came down onto the dance floor, busted some moves, and rapped for us. <laughs> oh, no. Flashback, it all rushed into my head. DJ etch -a sketch undergoing a Jekyll and Hyde transformation into MC Pasty, who snatched the microphone sauntering on the dance floor and spit a classic flow like, Drunk off Chris, Mommy on E, can't keep a little model hands off me, both in the club high singing off key, and I wish I never met her at all. It gets better. Ordered another round. It's about to go down. <gasps> I couldn't have. But I did. I knew it in my heart of hearts. The voicemail continued. I'm an event coordinator, and I'm looking for a DJ to play our corporate retreat at the Ritz-Carlton next month. Holy shit, I had booked another gig? At the Ritz-fucking-Carlton! But I was embarrassed, not to mention more than mildly ashamed. Rita was pissed, and she had vouched for me to her supervisor, and I had gotten trashier than Kid Rock at a MAGA rally. <laughs> at this point in my short DJing career, I earnestly tried to listen to the message the universe was sending my way. I decided if I was being paid to DJ, the least I could do was stay sober through the event. I mean, hell, if all this went well, maybe I could go into business for myself and DJ part-time. For the Ritz-Carlton gig, I purchased some of my own equipment. I arrived on time and was a well-behaved man on the mixer. As the night went on and Natalie found me, she said, so when are you going to get drunk and rap on the mic like you did last party? <laughs> Ugh, my face flushed red. Oh, ugh, I don't do that anymore, I confessed. That's not me, that, that was an anomaly. But she started, that's the whole reason we hired you. So if you could make that happen sooner rather than later, we'd all really appreciate it. Universe, I believe that's my cue. It was time to suit up in my cape and mask and take a double shot of radioactive super juice, no chaser. And to my surprise, it worked and has been working for the last eight years. <laughs> DJ etch -a sketch is currently available for weddings, corporate events, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, quinceañeras, and anywhere you need someone to turn up the volume with, give it to me, give me that funk, that sweet, that nasty, that cushy stuff. But don't bullshit me. Come on, give me that funk, that sweet, that nasty, that good stuff. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>